around the 40 or 50. <laughs> um, well, we all look a little different now. I got a few do. scars. Yeah. And a couple pucks in the face. A couple pucks in the face, a couple surgery. How is the retired life, Petty? It's good. Yeah. I don't really miss the game that much, but uh, certain aspects I miss. I miss a paycheck every two weeks. Besides that, uh, you keep you keep saying that the paycheck. Hey? Yeah. But it's it's good to be back here. You miss the you miss the boys in the room. Yeah, you miss that stuff. But there's a lot of BS that uh, you don't miss. True. The ups, the downs, the uh, yeah. minors, the coaches that don't like you, coaches that do like you, which I'm sure you can attest. Yeah, I think, but I think that those experiences are going to happen in anything you do in life, right? 100%, but I think the majority of people see, you know, a former, or not even a former, it could be current, and they think it's all roses, you know, right. like there's no adversity that comes with it. I, it's, uh, you just see us play the game. You just see us play the game, it's like, like oh, seven till 10. Exactly, and you're like, oh, that look, looks easy. Well, right. you know, the, the training's tough now. Um, like I said, the politics surrounding teams, coaches, the league. Right. That's not the fun part. And so to, to, to reiterate, yeah, that's the stuff I don't miss. I miss the boys, the boys in the room. <laughs> it's fun It's fun when you go in a room and you have a group of guys that you are friends with right away. 100%. It doesn't matter if you play with them for two days or two years. Yeah, that's the hockey player thing. You, within a couple of days, a couple of beers maybe at the bar and uh, <laughs> you, you, you get with their besties. It's like, oh, you played with this guy? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I played with that guy too. Yeah, yeah what everyone, a beauty. <laughs> everyone knows everybody. Now on the left hand side, coming up here, we got the beautiful part of the buildings. Life as a journeyman NHL hockey player was was amazing. Listen, I I was fortunate to have to play in the NHL. Um, I was never a top four defenseman, but to be able to have that opportunity to play there as a as a five six defenseman through my prime um, it was a fantastic experience. I got to meet a whole bunch of amazing people and and play the pinnacle of my game. And it was uh, listen as a journeyman, it's it's tough at times. You know, you're there was never a year I played in the NHL that it wasn't a healthy scratch. So, you know, you kind of go, you're not a guy that can go up there like a, like a Phil Kessel and have a bad game, um, and that's okay. I mean, as, as a journeyman, you are as good as your last game or as good as your last shift, and Petty can talk about this, and that's, and that's the truth, you know. It, you know, there were some highs and some lows, but that's life. I mean, it, it's the same on a daily basis with anybody. I mean, yeah, we ended up, I ended up playing a game that I played when I was five years old for a living. You know, and not many people are privileged enough to say that. So I forget the stat, but it was it was alarming um, the percentage of kids that a play hockey in Canada, b get to the National Hockey League, and then c actually stay there. And it was like 0.001%. I mean, I've got lots of friends that have played a game in the National Hockey League, but I think let's call it like 200 games to say that you actually played played in the National Hockey League, and. The stat that was out there it was shocking that you know the actual chances of of uh, making it an actual career i would try to kind of communicate that to the parents that listen only a small percentage of you are going to make it the nhl let's enjoy this let's look at this as a way that your child can build life skills teamwork living a healthy lifestyle as opposed to looking at this as a way that little billy is going to get a 25 million dollar contract and that's what i would try to communicate to parents a short drive from Victoria lies Shawnigan Lake, a university prep school with a new academy hockey program. Perhaps more than any other academy, they value the importance of education and preparing their players for more realistic careers than playing pro. Well, 99.9% .9 of the kids that come to Shawnigan are going on to university. So we are, first and foremost, a university prep school here. So, it's a given that you're going to be a good hockey player to play here, but you don't even get in the gates unless you can prove that you have academic abilities of a certain standard. So with that being the case, fast forward three, four, five years down the track, our expectation is you're going to university to pursue an academic career of some kind, or, or a career that would have an academic basis to it. For me personally, I don't care where you play. 
I don't care if you're playing minor hockey. I don't care if you're playing in the academies. I don't care if you're playing wherever. Um, I'm looking for the best player to fit whatever club that I'm working with. Um, now, that being said, the leagues are very different. One league is a little quicker. One league really focuses on uh, small little things. And that would be more along the lines of the academy look. Um, minor hockey, uh, you know, there's a lot of raw -er, uh, players out there. They're not getting the same ice time as an academy is, and that's just the fact of life. Oh, what I care about is the kid on the ice at that moment during that game. That's what I'm looking at. And if it's the same as what it was in September, which I saw these guys, I saw them in November, I saw them in October, and now I'm sitting in February, and I'm seeing the same guys doing the same things, being that consistent kid, that's what I'm looking for. I don't care about somebody's bloodlines. I don't care where they came from. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. And with the Royals, I'm looking for a guy who has a character that can go out in the community and be able to do uh, literacy, pieces uh, to um, somebody who can actually bring it on the ice as well. Um, so that's what we're looking at. Now, with that as well, we go and talk to coaches. We go and talk to their teammates. We observe ourselves. Head hanging and stick banging, we don't need those guys around. We can't have those guys around, not at our level. I think any school, if they're worth anything at all, they will talk about character development of the individual person. That has to be first. You know, the development of resilience, self-belief, courage, particularly in the face of adversity. You know, you take all of those things and apply them to today's game. I would like to think that even in the face of a, of a stinging, crushing loss, you know, sitting there and taking it on the chin and knowing that you sucked for a broad part of the game and it was your fault and you're then pressed by Dwayne Rollison who's another one of the coaches who isn't in this interview and asked what could you have done personally ab about this to change the result what is your responsibility and what are you willing to do about it next time you know those are tough questions for any of us to choke back let alone a 13, 14 year old boy coming on the scene who doesn't really know anything at all yet about what the dynamics of genuine competition are. You know, that's what's interesting for Brian and I. And that's why we're involved in coaching is to help these guys, to, to mentor them as best we can, to have them become more capable and more equipped to handle the challenges of life. After a successful road trip to the island, POE returns home for a regular season match against the Delta Academy team, with first place in the league on the line. All right, boys, we don't like these guys. These are our rivals. Let's go all player game, team game. We got to show Eddie that we're, we're still a team here. Let's uh, play the way we're going to play the playoffs, boys. Let's go here. Let's go, boys. Honor Clark, you start off. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Delta is Justin Sortif, a rugged power forward who is challenging Connor McLennan for the scoring lead in the CSSHL, as well as top spot in the WHL draft.
Getting his team on the board early, Jack tips in a point shot from Luke Prokop. Deadlocked at two, the teams prepare for sudden death overtime, which, like the NHL, is now played three on three. championship if that's a common goal because you only have so many moments in your career that you're going to play on a team like this.
look around the room. You want to go back out on the ice like that? Looks pretty stupid, right? Yeah. But if that's your decision and you want to play for, want to wear your jerseys like this for the rest of the year, then let us know. We didn't get first place. We've talked about it. We haven't won a big, meaningful game or a, tur or a championship since October. But it's a heck of a good team here we got. But when we go wrong, because we go individual. That's my Sunday sermon for today. Next time on Our Game, after a crushing loss, the team regroups for the playoffs and a chance to gain revenge against their Delta counterparts. Then finally, the big day comes and Jack discovers his fate at the WHL draft.